What's up, gentlemen? Today I have a very special guest, Mr. Paul McGregor. Um, Paul and I, <clears throat> my voice, I'm sorry, we're right after the Men Influential Conference, and uh, my voice is shot, but while Paul is here, he's here from the UK. Um, Paul and I go way back. What is your claim to fame, Paul? Um, I believe I invented influencer marketing. You were the first ever, oh, I was your first ever sponsorship, right? First ever sponsorship. Um, back when I was filming in my bedroom, Paul reached out to me. He had a, a online retail store that sold a lot of like accessories and like watches and scarves and, and ties and things of that nature. He reached out, I said, hey, would you be interested in, in getting some free product and talking about them? I'm like, hell yeah, let's do this. And so I remember it was a little purple scarf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a it was a black terrible product. <laughs> a black rubber watch. It was it was just it was back in like 2010. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean a long time ago. But Paul has tell everybody a little bit just about your your sort of your background. How you started sort of with style and then sort of evolved. Yeah, so um in 2009, I started the online business, which is what Aaron just mentioned. And the reason why I started that business was I lost my dad at 18, um, very suddenly to suicide. And um, I started the online business, really got into the fashion industry. I started lecturing at the London College of Fashion when I was 21 and um, worked on a few businesses. I had a men's fashion magazine for a period of time as well. And yeah, two years ago, I was out here uh, when it was StyleCon. Yep. And, um, Aaron and Antonio trusted me to, to stand up and, and talk about mal depression and, and suicide and that was the, the pivotal point for me because from that point forward I then really changed my content into to talking more about that um, and yeah it's kind of been a transition over the last year or, or, or two to, to, to talk more about something that's more meaningful. So two years ago Paul um, when I reached out I said hey do you want to you know come to the conference what do you want to talk about? He said, would you mind if I did a presentation about sort of suicide and depression in men? And I said, absolutely, because, you know, you guys know for, you know, who, who have watched my videos, I don't think I've been technically like depressed, but I've gone through some dark times. And I know that therapy was something that absolutely directly impacted my life in an amazing way, but it's still, I feel like stigmatized. Mm. Guys aren't talking about mental health. Um, you know, you don't feel comfortable going to your buddies or going to your friends or family members and saying, hey, I'm really not feeling so good. Everybody's sort of with, with Instagram and YouTube, everybody's putting on that happy face. And I really feel like it is so critical that we address and deal with the real shit that's happening in our lives. And so Paul, has sort of changed his focus and changed his mission. Tell everybody a little bit more about why you're doing why you're doing what you do. So, yeah, I think with, with my dad it was a huge shock, um, completely unexpected. He wasn't, he never really suffered with a mental illness, and I kind of didn't deal with the grief for a long period of time. The business was great, but it was also a distraction, and I think a lot of people can maybe relate to that. I was just distracting myself, and. Yeah, so for me now, it's one, to try and help, as you say, those people that are suffering maybe in silence to actually say that it's okay to talk, whether you, you know, go to therapy or you talk to one of your friends or family members, it doesn't make you less of a man no. to talk. And, and secondly, now I'm a dad, it's, you know, the suicide rates amongst young people is scary as well. So my kind of aims is if I can talk more about it, hopefully the next generation, you know, my kids will hopefully be um, better equipped when it comes to dealing with mental health. I think it's gonna get worse, Paul. Mm. I think that, I think more people are starting to feel bummed out, starting to feel depressed, starting to feel like they're, they're not as amazing as everybody they see on social media, yeah. they see on Instagram, because that's the thing, right? When you look at social media, when you look at YouTube, when you look at Instagram or Facebook, people are showing you the best, right? They're not showing you the fact that they're not happy. They're putting on a happy face or they're, they're just showing you through a, a keyhole sort of this amazingness that is their life. And that's just not reality. Yeah. It's not reality at all. And I so, call it like your highlight reel, you know, you're yeah. never going to share the, the bad points and we're scrolling through Instagram comparing our lives to someone else's, you know, highlight reel. And it's know? so dangerous. It's yeah. so dangerous to get into that mindset. Um, but I, I truly feel because of this, I think people are going to, I think it's going to increase in terms of the amount of people that do need help that are, I mean, 
suicidal and, and film. Yeah, I think it comes down to education as well. Like we're not taught any of this at schools and um, I don't know whether it's different here, but in the UK, our support system is very bad. You know, we've got eight month waiting lists for, you know, young people if they want therapy. And, you know, if that was a physical illness, that would never happen. Um, so I, I believe that, yeah, it is going to get worse and we need to start being educated on how to deal with, with, with mental health because as I said yesterday in the talk, we all have it. You know, we all have a mind, we all have mental health. Um, so yeah, we definitely need to be educated on, on how to deal with it. And so what's some advice to uh, people out there in terms of if they are struggling, if they are dealing with things, where can they go? What can they do? Is there a resource that you can sort of recommend or? Yeah, I mean, with mental health, it's, it's so individual. So again, there's no one size fits all approach. So, you know, what helped me was, you know, starting the business, dressing well, it sounds, obviously you understand. Confidence that, from the outside in. Yeah, right? and then, you know, starting a business and, and doing something more meaningful, but everyone is so different. So I would, you know, suggest anyone to just try, um, you know, whether it's, Therapy, and again, therapy worked for me, but I went through three different therapists before I found the and that's, that's the other thing, guys. A lot of people think when they hear therapy that they're just going to go to a therapist and it's going to be the right match. Yeah, yeah. It's not that way. Sometimes you got to try, like Paul was saying, a few different therapists in order to find that person that connects with you, that really helps you. Um, you know, I have been to multiple therapists from the age of three. My mom, we were, we were on welfare and there were some public you know, programs that were available. And she was, you know, a hippie and, and really encouraged me from a young age to sort of talk and deal with things. And so she had me in therapy when I was three um, throughout my life. You know, I've, I've gone to therapy at different points when I had to deal with something. Um, when I was in college, I went to therapy because I was very upset and angry um, and a lot of things. Um, my mother was, was one of the people that I was very, very upset with uh, because I felt like, you know, she, she drug me through some, some bad stepfathers that were emotionally and mentally abusive. And I lost the ability when, from a very young age to sort of stand up for myself and to talk about just, or, or to basically demand, you know, the best for myself. And I lost my ability to stand up for myself. And so in college, people took advantage of me. I went to therapy. After college, people took advantage of me. I went to therapy again. And it was really in my late 20s that I found a therapist that helped me sort of embrace sort of everything I was dealing with and helped me through them and realize that I, I, was, I was valuable, really, mm -hmm. honestly. And so, um, you know, I encourage any of you, if you guys are struggling with something, if you're dealing with something, I know that it can seem bleak, I know it can seem dark, I know that sometimes it can seem hopeless, but you just can't, you can't be, a, you can't isolate yourself. Yeah, and I, th I think as well, we have to understand that vulnerability is strength. You know, as, as men in particular, we feel, if we talk about how we feel, we're weak or we're less of a man, but, you know, when you are, you know, okay with being vulnerable, you know, I see that as a, as a form of, you know, being strong and being able to deal with your emotions. Absolutely. Because you know, It can get better, you know, if there are some people watching this that are in low points and you said, you know, you've been there, I've been there, and so many others have, it can get better. It's, it's going to be a gradual process. There's no quick fix. Something else I just want to touch on, Paul, is um, is helping other people, right? Mm. Because, you know, you have people in your life right now that are suffering with whether or not it's depression, um, you know, suicide. You know, you don't want to be in a position where, you know, Paul was in, honestly. Yeah. Like, when you were 19, like, the regret of what could I have done. Yeah, yeah, Thank you, yeah. right? And so what's something that somebody can do if they maybe just want to sort of encourage somebody that they feel might be in a bad place or they recognize some some warning signs what's what what should they do to help them i think um compassion is so important again when you know we were uneducated with with depression and for us it was you know why is that depressed he's got you know no reason to be sad um, because we didn't understand it so i think if you can understand and show compassion to that person um they're going to feel more safe to open up um, and, and secondly, I think it's important that we do ask twice sometimes, um, because if, you know, I said, how are you? And I'm good. Responds, I'm good, I'm fine. But if you actually said, you know, but, you know, tell me, is everything okay? Asking twice sometimes can actually sometimes get them to, to open up. And also like the nonverbal communication that the person is doing. A lot of times we're conditioned, right? When somebody, I find myself doing this, right? Somebody will just say, hey, how you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm good. Or I'm tired, I'm tired. Am I really tired? I just, it's, yeah. it's you gotta listen to somebody, but it's more than what they're saying. 
It's more than it's more than the words coming out of the mouth. You've got to sort of notice those behavioral changes because that's yeah. one of the warning signs, right? Yeah, and if it's, it's someone that you love and someone that you spend a lot of time with, you notice those behavior changes. And again, with, with my dad, it was a very quick behavior change, but sometimes it's more gradual, you know, and it's about being aware of it and not being afraid to, to ask them if everything's okay and, and really showing compassion to that person. And also as well, just knowing one thing that helped me is knowing that you can't always control that situation. You know, if we love someone, we want them to get better. But a lot of the times we can't, you know, we can only do as much as we possibly can to try and get that person, you know, the help. Um, Absolutely. Guys, where can, where can they find you, Paul? So I'm doing more on Instagram, um, so it's pmcgregor.com, YouTube as well, so I'm going to start updating the channel again. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a lot on, on social media, it's probably the best place to find me. You're doing a lot of content now. Now, yeah. About, it's funny because he made a shift, he was talking about style because that's what he knew, that's what he thought was, was something he was passionate about. And, and then I started dressing really badly. <laughs> then you're like, screw that, stuff. I love that jacket. <laughs> But, uh, but now, your mission, your goal, what is your goal, Paul? It's just to, like I say, just try and you know, break down that, that stigma, as you said, and try and show people that it's okay to talk. Because again, I was very silent for, for years after. How'd you handle your, your, your depression? At the time, it was exercise helped me a lot, but again, doing something really small. So but, it start, but it started with self-destructive behavior. Exactly. You know, it was, it was the distractions. It was starting a business, chasing money, cars, drinking alcohol most, most evenings. Um, and then, yeah, it eats away at you for, for a long period of time. And it's, again, it's a gradual process. There's days where I feel down, there's days where I feel, I feel great. Um, and it's just being aware of how to deal with those down days now. And I feel like I've got more coping strategies. A bit like when we spoke last time, you said, you know, you exercise. That's a big coping strategy. Oh, absolutely. Like exercise has, has gotten me, I truly feel has, has, has gotten me through a lot of really dark times in my life because um, David Goggins, um, I, mm. I mentioned this a lot, but he has a saying that exercise calluses your mind and, yeah. and helps you deal with things. And, um, and, and truly exercise, you know, has, has definitely helped me. Also, you know, businesses and small little successes, right? That, you know, when you have small little wins on a, on a weekly basis and then a monthly ba or a monthly basis, then a weekly basis, and then a daily, it's these small little wins and stringing yeah. things together and just being around people that you love and being around healthy, you know, happy people, um, getting the toxic energy as much as possible out of your life. Also something that helped me was, was backing off of social media because I found myself just, just getting really bummed out when I see all these people. Like my life doesn't look like what I see everybody else's life look like on, on Instagram. I have bad days. I have bad weeks. But it's about making sure that you have the tools and the the skill set in order to help yourself push your or pull yourself up out of that negative space. And so, guys, down below, I'm gonna link to all Paul's stuff. Um, I just wanted to have a little conversation with you guys because I know that we're not alone. I know you're not alone, or I want you to know that you're not alone. You know, mental illness, taking care of yourself is so incredibly important. This is, you know, the only thing you really need to worry about is taking care of yourself first and foremost. Because if you're not happy and healthy for you, you're not going to be good for anybody else. Right, Paul? Sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate brother. it, man. I appreciate really appreciate it. your mission and, and I'm just proud of the, the growth and the success. And you've you seen you grow since 2010. Since that purple scarf, dude. Anyway, guys, we're going to run. My voice is about shot. I just wanted to take this opportunity and share my friend Paul McGregor with you because he's doing some incredibly important things that can definitely help and impact you in a positive way. Guys, everything is linked below. Paul, I love you. Thanks, brother. Thank you, man. Thank How's you. that for a really awkward hug? Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot bigger than me. <laughs> exactly. Guys, thanks for watching and take care of yourself because we love you.